All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. This is episode 11 of Just the Gee Top podcast. So today uh, we're very excited. We've got uh, from Half Gracie in San Francisco. We've got Wolf Barnado. Uh, he's a purple belt world champion, uh, training out of House there. So uh, as always on the podcast, we have Ahmed Tarani. Hello. We have Joe Jordan Short. Hey. And we have Rami Tarani. So Wolf, uh, Wolf, uh, sorry, I just got some feedback here. So Wolf, maybe you could just start uh, by telling us a little bit about yourself, uh, when you started training, how you got into jujitsu, kind of just your story. Okay, yeah, right on. Uh, thanks for having me, by the way, guys. Yeah, I'm I'm, a, I'm from out here in Northern California. I'm Wolf Barnado, I'm 20 years old. I uh. I started training when I was real young, like I think I was, fuck, I must have been like five, and I and I trained for a while. I trained till I was like maybe eleven or, or ten with a, just like a, it was kind of like a, like a MMA style, like it was like we did kick punch and we did jiu-jitsu everything. So I was just like a kid, like in a little kids program, I was training a lot when I was a kid. Um, but I was always like a little skateboarder, like a little skater punk. So I uh. I stopped for a while when I was a kid. I just got over it, and I just, uh, I think I was like 16 or 15 in high school, and I was getting in trouble and stuff. I needed to find a way to get out of trouble, so I started training again. Around like 16, I took it serious, and then uh, I started training again then, and, and then kind of never looked back. I, I actually, when I first got into it, I wanted to fight MMA for some reason, so I, I started training no gi a lot and, and like a lot of stand up, and I fought MMA, and I won an MMA fight when I was like 16, and then. Uh, I went on to just like start training in the gi full time after that, like and never really looked back. Just kept training in the gi like twice a day, ever since then. And now I'm 20. I'll be 21 in a month. So, been doing it out here with Kurt Osiander at Ralph Gracie, San Francisco. So you've been really just solely focused on jujitsu for the last four years, five years. Uh, yeah, like like four years probably. Just just like four years, just focusing on jujitsu. And a world champion purple belt, it's pretty impressive. So what uh, what made you decide to go just yeah, man. go ahead? Oh no no, nothing. <laughs> okay. So what should, made you decide we, we should tell people there's a slight delay, so um, that's why if you if you hear a little delay, that's that's what it is, so no big deal. Yeah. So Wolf, what made you want uh, what made you get full time into jiu-jitsu? Like when you Found it again. What uh, what made you kind of decide that that's what you wanted to do? And like, and like particularly, like why why after your MMA fight did you stop to try and focus on MMA and all that? And you wanted to focus on just the gi. What made you switch? Yeah, especially since you won. It sounds like you won your first match. So yeah, fuck, bro. I mean, I just like uh, same reason you guys. Love, you know, it's, it's like I love it, bro. You know, I just I was always training in the gi back when I first started and. I really was only training, like, for a short period of time when I fought MMA. I guess I ended up, I remember I, I had good hands, and, like, I remember I choked the guy, and I was like, fuck, man, like, jiu-jitsu is rad. Like, I just want to train and just fucking just do it. And then I kind of got into the full time because cause I guess, like, man, what, what happened? Oh, no, we were just laughing at a comment you made. It's just delayed on your end, that's keep all. Talking? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, keep going. <laughs> Uh, uh, um, so fucking, uh, like, I just, uh, I just, I hated school, man, like, when I graduated high school, when I had been training for, like, taking it serious training every night for a while, and I, I graduated school, and I was like, man, I don't want to go to fucking school, school sucks, the only thing that's good about school is there's lots of chicks, but, like, I just, I was over it, so I just, I think, you know, I'm just gonna do this, I'm just gonna train, this is what I want to do, you know, like, this is what makes me happy, you know, keeps me healthy, keeps my mind right. You know, all I do now is think about jiu-jitsu, so it's like, it's like become my whole life, and it, it kind of just slowly took over after after I decided I wanted to train. That's awesome. So have you been training at house the whole time, Wolf, like since you got back into training? Uh, have you been training exclusively under Half and Kurt? Um, so I was originally, cause I live out here, it's called Marin County. It's, it's like a little north of the city. 
I originally started training with um, the guy that taught me when I was a kid. And he has a little academy out here. My sister trains as well. She's really good. She trains over there. He builds really technical guys. He's a he's a good teacher, you know. But just like uh, I ended up like I was training Tuesday Thursday mornings in the city, and I ended up kind of having a, a falling out with the dude, and and I ended up just Kurt opened up his arms to me like out like two years ago, and I started training with Kurt full time then, and uh, since then my jujitsu is like night and day. Just it's like Rami knows you. The training's so tough over there. It's like I've been just training the last two years, and I've seen like. Crazy improvement. It's epic. So what um, what uh, what rank were you when you switched academies? Were you a blue belt at that time? Yeah, I was a blue belt. I got my purple from Kurt. So, so um... Now, so I'm just going to throw it out there because I love training with Kurt and I love training with like under the half, half team and everything. But like, what's your favorite thing about training there? Because like we asked, we, I don't know, I, I feel like that's an important thing. You're a world, world champion. It's like, what makes that team so good? Why, why do you want to stay there? Bro, like the fact of how Kurt, I mean, Kurt, man, it, it's Kurt. Like the way he runs shit over there, it's like, I mean, I train all day, so it's like, I know you train at night and you see it at night and it's a little more formal at night, but man, he, he, he's like a training partner to all of us, you know, like, so, so he's like, uh, he gets it, you know, he gets that we all have our own games. He gets that we all need some freedom to drill, you know, all that kind of shit. So like, he's, he's real open about it, you know, and, and it's like the way Kurt, the way Kurt leads, it's like, he's not like, you know, he, I want to follow Kurt because of, because I respect him, not because he tells me I have to follow him, you know, but. It's like a, he allows for so much freedom in our environment that, like, we get there in the morning and we're just drilling, drilling all our, our game for, like, you know, an hour or so. And then we, we train. Everyone's really good. The training's really tough. It's like, man, I couldn't be happier with how everything's going over there. Uh, just really quick question. You say you train all day. Um, how, how do you do it without being sore the next day? I mean, maybe it's just that I'm older than you by, like, you know, a little bit. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, like, like, is there any particular supplements? Do you just eat a lot? I mean, I see you're really, you're a light. I believe I read an interview uh, that you did a while ago, and you said you're even light for light feather. So you're not even really that big of a guy. So, so yeah, how, how, what do you eat? What do you take? Supplements, stuff like that to, to stay healthy and not sore. Yo, know, like, like first off, I think, I think like, you know, I, I train all day. I'm at the academy all day. Like today, I was there since 10 in the morning. I just got back to my house from the academy just now. But it's like, man, I think, you know, I take supplements. I like to take after I train. Uh, my, my I have a sponsor, Max Muscle. I like to take their products. I take this thing called Arm. It's it's real good. I like to take um, BCAs, things like that. You know, and that night train when you gotta train it again. I like to drink some pre-workout drink. I I get kind of addicted to it, but. I like to take that too at night. It's real good, and I mean, I think more importantly than than anything is is uh, you know, like the rest you get in between both your trainings. So like, for me, I, I'll train. You know, we'll train like three hours in the morning, usually like 10 to 1 p.m. And it's like, bro, if I don't take a nap between between like 1 and 5:30 when I start drilling again, I can't. I'm fucked up. I can't do it. You know. So like, I gotta I gotta sleep in between. And uh, I try to make sure every night I get I get at least eight hours of sleep on top of that. Um, yeah, I think sleep's crucial for, for recovery and not being sore. But, fuck, I wake up sore, you know? <laughs> <clears throat> so, Wolf, when you uh, – like you said, you've been at the academy all day. Do you just crash on the mats between your training sessions or uh, do you go home or <laughs> – No, nah, bro. So, like, what I do is I – I live that, that hood life. No, I'm just kidding. I, I I just like I take the bus. I take the bus real early. So I, I live out here in Moran. It's maybe like it's maybe like 20 minutes away or whatever. But like on the bus, fuck, it takes like an hour, hour and a half to get out there. So I wake up real early, and everyone gets to the academy at 10. That's when like all the all the guys that like come in at 10 that take it real serious. We we meet up at 10, and we'll uh. 
I'll, I'll sit on the bus on my way out there, you know, because I get on the bus and it's all the guys going to work at like their their desk jobs. Like so, I'm there like with like my backpack full of geese, you know, like all my shit. Like I got a bag full of geese. I'm in my like pajama pants, like half awake, just some some kid on the bus sitting next to all these dudes in their suits. And I just like fuck, I couldn't be happier. I'm like God, I. So happy I don't work behind a desk. So, <laughs> so then, usually, I get, usually I get to the academy at ten, and it's like, well, I'm not gonna go back home. You know, I gotta train again at night. So I, I'll train until one. You know, I, I'm in SF in the city, so I got some. I got like, I, don't know, I just hang out in that little neighborhood over there. There's a tattoo shop close by where some guys that train with us tattoo. So I'll go over there. I'll hang out, say what's up, eat some food, and then I usually go back and yeah, and fall asleep on the mats until like. We train again at night, or we'll drill in the middle of the day. It depends on the day. Do you have a pretty strict uh, training routine throughout the day, like uh, drilling and then rolling technique, things like that? Yeah, 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 both, yeah like, for like, sure. Do you lift like, as well? I, uh... Oh, yeah, but that's that's just for the ladies, bro. You know, you got to... <laughs> 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 Nah, I, uh, nah, dude, I, I like to lift, dude. I, actually, when I was a kid, like, before I started training again and shit, when I was, like, when I was, like, young in high school, you know, like, I was maybe, like, 14, and I'm a smaller dude, like, we all got into lifting, and, like, so to, I always lifted since I was young. I, I just love the lift, but usually um, I'll do, like, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we'll train, uh, We'll train at 10 till 1, and then we'll, like, uh, it's usually, like, we'll drill we'll drill for an hour, we'll train for another hour, we'll stretch and shit, and then we'll drill again until 1, and then, um, and then, uh, I'll go eat whatever, do my thing, come back, depending on the day, I'll, I'll, uh, maybe drill if I have energy in the middle of the day, you know, like, if, if people are hanging out too, sleeping on mats, but then, uh, at night, everyone gets there, and at 5.30, I start drilling again, and I'll drill again till, uh, till, um, fuck, what is it? I'll drill again until, like, I don't know, 6.45, and then we'll train again at night, and then get out of there. Um, Tuesday, Thursday mornings, I go and I do my lifts. I do Olympic lifts, uh, a lot of body weight stuff, and so I'll, I'll stick to that. I'll do that early, and then I'll go out to the city. I train at 4. Uh, we train Nogi. Tuesday, Thursdays at 4 p.m., and then um, we get done with that, and then, like, around 5.30-ish, I train again uh, until, like, you know, like, 7.30-ish, and so that's kind of, like, my schedule throughout the week. I like to get two days of rest on the weekends, but I live at a house where we have mats in the living room, so sometimes on Saturday nights when I get off work, we train, too, but Sundays, I usually take the day off. Holy so, crap! I, <laughs> what the hell, man? That's crazy. <laughs> so, like, um, I, I, go ahead. Uh, no, I was gonna ask because um, you said work. So, I was gonna ask you, like, do you work on weekends or because there's no way you work during the day unless you work at night? <laughs> Bro, yeah, I, I work. Uh, I work on the weekends, um, ten to six, man. So, like, uh. I never really have a I never really have a day where I'm just like cruising, you know, like I ain't about that Playboy shit, dude. <laughs> but you're not, uh, you're not Rami. I don't know. We just we just uh we just train, you know, like train all week and <laughs> train all week and then on the weekends, yeah, I work ten to six. I work at this surf shop. These dudes are super cool. These guys I've always I've always known this is their their logo right here. I've known them since I was a kid because I always skateboarded. So I, I deal with all the skateboard stuff over there on the weekends. I just cruise work eight hour days. It sucks, but I, I gotta get make a little money, you know, to pay to pay shit. So like kind of going back to what you were saying with your uh, drilling and everything. I I know I've asked you this before, but like, what do you do or what exactly do you drill? How do you know when you want to move on to a different move? How do you, like how do you focus your drilling every week basically? Um, so in the, uh, what I do, you know, like what I like to do, the shit I like to play my game, um, in the mornings, I usually drill that, right? And, uh, that's like my, that's like, I'm like, when it comes to like that kind of shit, I'm like a drug addict. Like if I don't do that in the morning, I'm fucking losing it. Like I'm tweaking out. That's just like for my, that's for my own sanity. You know, I have to drill that shit all, always in the morning. Like your main, um, main game? 
yeah, like like my like what I like to play, you know, like I drill I drill like maybe a hundred reps from my guard and then a hundred reps from passing. Um of maybe two different positions three different positions. Um and then at night I like to just drill a lot of basics, you know, like I'll drill like uh, close guard positions, you know, like we'll drill some, we'll drill mostly basic stuff, um, just because that stuff's like real important, you know. Um, and as far as like when I know when to switch it up or whatever, uh, with 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 the positions I like to drill for my game, I feel like what happens is like they evolve, you know, like like uh, like if it's never the same, you know. So as I drill them more and more, every hundred, every like Every every day I do 100 reps, 100 reps, 100 reps. Like after 10,000 reps, man, I understand the position so much better that that like if I showed you how I drilled Baron Bolo like 100,000 reps ago, it would just look like a fucking completely different thing. You know, I within the drilling and within the reps, you get to understand the position and it, the position just evolves. You know, it's it's inevitable. It just it's just what happens. You know. So Wolf, do you find that um, <clears throat> it sounds like you do a lot of drilling? How? What would you say? Uh, like you, the breakdown is that you do drilling versus rolling. It sounds like it sounds like it's mostly drilling, but nah, it's probably. I'd say like it's probably half and half. To be honest, man, we we, we train like six. We'll train like six eights in the morning with thirty second rest in between, so it's like a, it's pretty like, pretty fast pace, you know, like forty eight minutes straight with thirty seconds in between each eight minute round, and so, uh, so like, I'd say like it's 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 like half and half. I definitely, we train really hard, you know, so like I'd say the rolling takes it out of me more than anything, you know, but, but uh, yeah, I'd say I, I it's like a half and half focus for me, you know. Do you have a preference? Do you prefer drilling over rolling or vice versa? Man, for me, I think, like, you can't just do one, you know? If you just drill, you're just a soft-ass mark. You're just fucking, you're not doing shit, you know? <laughs> you just drill. But, but, dude, dude, if you, if, if you, uh, if you if you just train, then you're some you're just bomba. You're just like a you're just like a, a fucking gold gym sweeping guy. You're just like a you know what you're gonna lift weights and train. That's like what <laughs> professional athlete does that. You know that's not how it goes down. I think you have to do both. You know so I don't I, I think about them the same. I just think about like one of them's one of them's uh they each they each have to do with each other you know i drill i drill exactly what i do when i train so they go hand in hand for me so uh so wolf how um maybe just talk to us a bit about uh about your world's experience this year at purple belt where you won uh what was that like for you uh was was your game different this year uh, you know, is there anything different like pans versus worlds that uh, that got you to the podium this time? Um, man, I, I, it was it was good. You know, it was, it was an amazing experience. It was great. I like I honestly like I try not to think about it a lot. You know, I try to forget. I try to forget about about all the good shit. It's probably bad for my brain and it makes me go crazy, but. I try to forget about the good shit. Just think about all the bad stuff, so I can just like stay, stay focused on what I need to do to get better, you know, from that from that tournament. But uh, you know, it was it, it was a dream of mine to win worlds. You know, like like fuck, man, my my whole entire life, bro, is jujitsu. All all I do is train. You know, if I show you, like, look, I'll show you my my house, bro. Like, I'll show you how I live right now. Oh, this look. is great, right? Yeah, here. I love it. Okay. So so, <laughs> so let me turn some so lights. Let me, let me turn some lights on. Be like. BJJ. So, so like, look, this is this is where I live. This is my living room right here. <laughs> like, uh, I, I live in, I live, I live like. So look, here's my living room, right? And then, and then, and then here's my room. I just live in the living room, and there's just a mattress on the floor and shit. 
This is like how I. This is where I bring chicks to. It, it's not the best experience, but. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, dude, like, so I live. I live. I live my whole life. I live my whole life for jujitsu, bro. For my jujitsu, and and of course, every every nerd that fucking trains jujitsu, you know, we're all nerds. It's all our dream to win worlds. You know, it's probably all your dream to do that too. So of course, it was like a, it was a nuts feeling, and it was an amazing, an amazing accomplishment, but. Man, as soon as I stepped off the podium, I just was, like, stressed out. Like, I just knew that that's what I want to do, you know? So I have to keep doing what I'm doing to do it, you know? Hey, uh, Wolf, I, I read that, uh, like I said, there was an interview about you that mentioned your experience at Worlds. And uh, <clears throat> there was a, a match you said that you won by DQ. Can you explain that? Yeah, man. The guy, the guy, uh, I fought this guy from Cobrina. He's really good. He actually won Pan Ams in my division, um, and uh, man, I don't really know what's up with the dude. He he, uh, I think we were double guard pull, and and we both got negative advantage, negative advantage. We got warned. Um, it was the semis, right? So the the ref was like real serious and shit. One of those Brazilian guys, probably in a bad mood, been refing all day, and uh, I I tried to bear and bowl to his back. I was almost like up edgy up onto his back. And he fought out, came on top, he got his advantage, whatever. So he was doing good, you know, and there was, I think, like, four four minutes left or something. I made my hooks, and we went out of bounds. When we went out of bounds, the ref pulled us back in. He put my hooks back in. And and as he was putting my hooks back in, I started saying, no, 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 his hooks weren't here. His hooks weren't here. The ref warned him and said, shh, don't talk. And then, uh, and then, uh, he kept talking. He said, no, no, his hooks weren't here. So he, he warned him again, and he gave me, uh, he gave me two because that's what happens when you get three penalties. The other guy gets two because he gave him three penalties. And they said, combat, you know, start. And we started again. The, the guy looked up at the board. He goes, fix the points to the ref. And uh, the ref was just over it. He just stood up right there and and uh, and and stood us both up, both up in DQ guy. And it was, I mean, it was lame, man. I, I felt bad for the guy. The guy's really good. And I, I'm sure he trained really hard, you know, so it sucks for him. That's no way to win. And that's no way to lose. That was that was lame. Um, have you have you faced him since then, or or do you think your past will cross again? Is the so your belt level still the same weight? Oh yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't know. I think that dude's ma I I seen a photo of him. He won like Masters Worlds, so I know he's like kind of uh, he's like thirty or something. I'm sure we'll fight again, bro. He's really good. The, the guy's good. Um, but yeah, it was cool, you know. It was it's uh, it sucked that had to happen, but yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm going to run into all these guys probably until Black Belt, you know, like, so it's, it's like, it's, it's no worries, you know? How, how do you kind of uh, choose, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead Rami. Uh, how, how do you choose what tournaments you're going to do? Because I noticed, like, you, you're not one to just, like, jump at one tournament after the other, after the other, after the other. You tend to just kind of choose one tournament here and there. It's kind of hard to predict when you'll compete. How do, how do you choose? What's your criteria? Um, so, fuck, me and my roommate, this guy, Julian Marquez, he's he's a black belt under, under half, too. He's, uh, me and him stay on, like, a pretty similar schedule. He's, like, always been my main training partner since I was, you know, a blue belt and he was a brown belt, you know, and, and we, we live together. He lives here at the house. So we stay on a, a similar schedule. We found that like, like we like to really compete every month or twice a month, um, January to June. We try to compete a lot between those months, and then on the on the seasons in between that, we like to, um, you know, just train. You know, train double, still train really hard. You know, eat more and and try to like go back to the drawing board and I think to just like develop my game in the months in between. But January to June, I'm usually fighting every month or or uh, twice a month. Um, and then, like, you know, like right now, for example, it's like I'm, I'm going to fight again coming up before uh, before January again. But, you know, I, in between that, that kind of that kind of period, um, like summer and right before the New Year starts, I like to just train real hard and, like, go to the drawing board, fix everything from that year and, and try to develop my game and then come into the next year um, just like a more well-developed – game, you know? Yeah, Wolf, do you ever get offered super fights? I mean, uh, I know some of the, the talent that we have here in Toronto, uh, you know, the, the guys who do really well, whatever, they get offered super fights and whatnot, and 
I'm sure they're paid in a certain amount of money and whatnot. Is it the same over there? Do you get offered super price to certain uh, regional house shows there? Nah, bro. I, I never had no super fight before. Uh, I mean, that'd be sick, you know. Like, fuck, there's there's hella guys over here. I'd like to fight that are really good, you know. No gi or gi, you know. There's there's there. I mean, I can't go calling out fucking black belts, but I mean, I'll I'll, I'll take a super fight against any one of the best dudes over here. Like, that'd be an honor, you know. Um, but nah, man, I'm just a purple belt dude. I I ain't nobody. I just like to train a lot and and like uh. You know, if I get offered something like that, that'd be sick. You know, if there's money too, fuck, I'd, I'd be eating after that. That'd be cool. You know, I'd love to get some money. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, no, i never done I never done no super fight before, no. So, Wolf, do you keep it, uh, as far as you mentioned gi or no gi, do you, you keep it fairly balanced, I think you said, throughout the week, you train no gi Tuesdays, Thursdays. Um you know, now that we're in Nogi season, do you do you switch more yeah. over to Nogi or? Nah, I just train Nogi twice <laughs> a week, two Thursdays. Uh, man, I think that my Nogi game gets better the more I train in the gi. To be honest, you know, and the less that I, the less I train in the gi, and the more Nogi I train, the the worse I feel my jiu-jitsu gets. You know, so I think about like, I, I like to I like to train Nogi twice a week just. I think it trains my um, it trains my instincts a lot. You know, like I help. I think it helps with my instincts in the gi and in every aspect of my game. You know, so I like to train no gi a lot. Um, just twice a week, I, I try to focus on those two days. Um, throughout the year or whatever, my game. You know, I, I really care a lot about. I mean, it's, to me, it's all the same, bro. Like I feel like my game no gi is pretty much the same as it is in the gi. So like. I just I just stay training and I, I mean I feel like the two days a week thing it makes my ju jiu jitsu benefit as a whole probably the most. Do you, do you do, do nogi because there go go ahead Jordan. No go ahead man. Do you do nogi because you want to do something like nogi worlds or is that not on your path? Because I know you said January to uh, whenever it was, but that doesn't include the nogi time, nogi worlds time, right? Um, you know, like I I'll fight nogi worlds. You know, it's for me. A lot of it is like, man, I get my money right, I plan it out, January to June I fight. It's like, I'll, I'll probably try to make a push and fight Nogi Worlds this this uh, this year, you know. But uh, a lot of it too is like, it's hard for me to get down there. It's hard to get a flight to LA. It's hard to pay for a hotel, you know. It's like, I got to kind of pick and choose what I can try to go and win, you know. Uh, that being said, I would love to go down and fight Nogi Worlds, you know, like. A lot of guys have a lot of support and shit, so it's like they go fight everything. If I had like, if I had tons of support, man, I'd probably fight everything too. But like, uh, I think like, for me, yeah, I I train no gi cause, cause uh, cause it helps my jiu-jitsu as a whole, and and I stay ready to fight any tournament. You know, I don't I don't really, really worry too much about it. Do you uh, do you compete regularly in gi and no gi then, or do you mostly do gi tournaments? No, I really only fight. I haven't. I have never competed no gi to be honest, man. Uh, I I just fight in the gi, <laughs> but I, I don't mind. I would love to fight no gi too. Wolf, do you have like a, a favorite opponent or or maybe toughest opponent that you've faced so far? Maybe he didn't hear you there. Oh, okay. Sorry, Wolf. Uh, do you have like a uh, favorite? Oh. Fuck, man. I, to be honest, my favorite opponent. Uh, I, I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say I have. Like, Is he? What? Free? Should I answer it? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, there was just the right. delay, I think. So yeah, keep going. Could I answer your question now? Yep. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Oh, okay. My bad. I think like um my favorite my favorite opponent. I mean I train I train with this kid uh Jose Hernandez. He's real good and and before we were on the same team a couple of years ago we fought a bunch we fought like four times 
he's my he's like one of my main training partners now. He's a really good, really good dude. He was always fun to compete with, you know. But other than that, no, I don't really try to worry about other people or I try not to care too much about uh, anyone in particular, you know. I just try to worry about myself and my jiu-jitsu developing. So you also mentioned that uh, you know you try to focus. You don't you don't try to think about uh, your good moments so much. You try to focus on on getting better. Uh, what else do you do mentally to stay focused, to stay hungry, and and to keep pushing your game forward? Yeah. What was the question? <laughs> so, so what are the what are the things that you do mentally to keep pushing yourself forward, to stay hungry, to stay motivated? Man, I, I feel like I feel like uh, I don't really have to do anything. I feel like it's like jujitsu drives me crazy, right? Like it's all it just like it makes me the most happiest, and it makes me like the most pissed off. You know, it just drives me nuts. It's all I think about. It's just it's just like a it's like a it's like a really bad addiction, you know. It, my mom hates it that I that I like to do so much, but I think for me, like, there's nothing in particular, anyone in particular that motivates me. I think it's just like if I don't if I don't complete my training and, and like my my rich my 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 regiment that I that I put myself through usually, if I don't complete it through the week, man, like or through the day, whatever, I can't even like I can't even. Like I just fucking lose it, dude. I don't feel right. I, I, I just feel depressed. I just feel like I, I feel like I'm going nuts. You know, I'm like a drug addict with it. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. You mentioned, uh, you mentioned, uh, financial support. Uh, you know, it, how is it uh, trying to get sponsorship in jujitsu? You know, trying to find people to. You know, cover tournament registration, things like that. Is it is it really um, a really competitive area? Like, is it really tough to find sponsors, or or how does that work for you? Um, yeah, man. You know, I have I have a couple sponsors that help me out. Um, Control Industries helps me a lot with. They they send me all my geese and stuff. The guy Blaine's really great. He keeps me like keeps me suited all the time. So he's the man for that. As far as, you know, money to go fight all these events and stuff, fuck, I see guys fighting all these events, guys I've beaten, guys, you know, guys that are good, I don't really know, just, just, I see so much guys that's just fighting, like, everything, and I just, like, I wonder how they do it, you know, I don't know. Um, as far as it goes, I think that, like, you know, my tournament I fight get paid for through Kurt, thank God, you know, he helps me out with, with the ones that, uh, with, with the ones that he wants me to fight, he pays for them, and I, and I fight them, and I train for them the best I can. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, like, I think it's hard to get, to get guys that are ready to just, like, throw money at you to go fight jiu tournaments, you know, it's not, it's not as big as it should be yet, but it'll be there, it'll get there eventually, you know? Hey, uh, Wolf, I have a, another question for you. Um, I'm assuming you haven't been injured severely yet, and hopefully you never do, but I'm just wondering, what would you do if you had an injury that takes two months, three months, and you know you're off layoff or whatever. Um, like, they, do you have a do you have do you have a backup for that? Do you uh, you know? Well, what would you do? Because like maybe it will happen, maybe not. You never know. But just curious about that one. Oh, um, yo, man, I think I think like the the most serious I ever had. I uh. I had a – last year, actually, after Pan Ams, I had won Pan Ams last year. I was feeling really good. I was getting ready to fight World, and I, and I wanted to win it. You know, I was, like, going to be my, my year, hopefully. And I actually tore the cartilage off my ninth rib. I tore them in half, you know. And that was maybe two months out of out of Worlds right there. I should have just rested for a couple of weeks, but I just said, fuck it. Like, I'm going to keep training. I'm going to keep training. I just kept training, and every day I kept popping – like, ripping my rib apart again, ripping it apart again. So I was out of Worlds last year because that, man, I, I think that, like, uh, when it's not a crazy serious injury, dude, to be honest, I, I'm a full believer in training through injuries. I think that, that you get injured in small places, you know, like you get little tweaks and tears and stuff because you're doing something too much and you're creating holes in another place, you know. So it's like when you fuck something up, like a rib injury or something like that, 
man, I just kept trending and I just kept, I just only played on top for like a couple months after that, you know, and, and, uh, the other thing I like to do when I get hurt like that is I'll start eating a lot. Like I'll try to gain a lot of weight. Like if you don't, if you ever notice like, like bodybuilders, they'll, they'll wake up and they'll cook all their meals in the morning and they'll just like, they'll eat all day and they'll try to, they'll try to get like as much mass on as possible. I think like for some reason, maybe I'm just dumb, but I think that that helps repair things faster, you know, like feeding your body nutrients all day. So like when I get real hurt or I get injured like that, I'll just, I'll just eat a lot and I'll try to like focus on lifting weights, you know, and just like get stronger and do what I can to do. If I can't do jiu-jitsu, I'll just do whatever I can do to like when I come back, keep myself a hundred, you know, but for the most part, man, I'll get injuries that like probably guys wouldn't train for like a couple weeks and I'll just be on the mat the next day. Like just like, just, just playing like whatever I can. I think that that's how you develop like new aspects, you know, but maybe that's Kurt's influence. You know, Kurt's like that too. Kurt, Kurt will get like so fucking hurt. Like he'll be crazy hurt. Like he'll, he'll be like, he'll, he'll like have one arm. You know, like he'll like, his shoulder will be like torn and like he should take like a month or two off and he'll be like training through it. Like, oh, it doesn't matter, bro. I'll be fine, bro. Injuries are for mentally weak people, you know? So I think <laughs> I, I, I think I watched Kurt do that and then I'm just like, fuck it. Like I just got to train, you know, I can't, if this fucking 49 year old dude is just training with a torn shoulder, like I'm not going to be a pussy and he's not training. I'm just training for my injuries. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That was an awesome answer. <laughs> Yeah. Wolf, how do you how do you find like that your game has progressed with Kurt? Like, do you find that uh, that it's changed a lot um, since you started training with Kurt uh, in terms of in terms of how you play your game? Yes, I think that like I think that you know when I was training before, the instructor was amazingly technical, right? And and and. Uh, and he – and I think anyone can get amazingly technical and just get, like – and get really good in, in, in an environment where there's not a lot of good guys around as long as you put the work in. But I just believe that, like, in order to, like, believe in your game and believe in yourself and, and know that you're going to go out there and just scrape dudes, like, you have to be in the academy and you have to be, like, smashing good guys. You have to be training with those black belts and doing good with the black belts and, and doing good with, those, with, with, like, with high-level guys to really – to really build that belief that, you know, you maybe you're the most technical guy, you have the best, sharpest game, but like, if you don't believe in it, you ain't shit, dude. You're not gonna do nothing to no one, you know. So, you have to like, you know, grind and and build that, build that kind of mentality and that belief in your own game. So, in order to do that, you need like some high level training. You need tough guys around you. You need to train all day, you know. So I think, when I came over to Kurtz, you know, like almost two years ago. Um, it was like my dream to just fucking train all day and be on the mat all day, you know, because I didn't have that where where I was prior to that. Um, and so, and so, when I finally got it, it was just like a, it was just like my mind exploded, you know. I just took, I've just been taking advantage of it ever since, you know. Like, and on top of that, there's just so much good guys that I train with around me at all times that have the same the same goals as me and that they do the same thing. They're just YouTube bums like me. That it's like, fuck, I'm in an environment that that. I feel like I can only succeed, you know, and, and it's a it's a good feeling. Nice. You mentioned that uh, you know you kind of mentioned it earlier about um, about Kurt's mentality and how it inspires you. You know, and I've heard other people say similar things. So, what is it about Kurt that uh, that that really drives and pushes people? Bro, Kurt is a fucking maniac, dude. He is the real thing, bro. I never seen I never seen anything like it and I and I never heard of anything like it. You know, like like he's damn near fifty years old, bro, and he fucking trains more than any of us. Like like I don't know how he does it, but man, he fucking is he's a, he's an animal, bro. It's nuts. So I guess you know like a lot of times it's it's Thursday, it's Wednesday, you know, we've been training doubles all week, fucking I'm tired, I've been lifting, haven't slept mm -hmm. right, I don't know, whatever. It's like and then I walk in there and I see Kurt, he's been there since he's been there since fucking six in the morning training and it's just like it's like time to train at night again and and you know, Kurt's probably fucking dead and, and I can't even imagine he's damn near fifty, like 
how's he gonna do this, you know? But but he fucking puts his gi on. He trains his rounds. He trains his rounds like like a man, you know. And so I guess he leads by example. It's like he's really real thing. You you can tell someone to do something as much as you want, but until you're the one doing it in front of them, it's like it's like they're not really gonna follow you, you know? Like you try to lead, but if you aren't a real leader, no one's gonna follow. And and Kurt is the realest guy I ever seen in my life, you know? Like that guy's the fucking man. Hey, um, That's awesome. Just really quick, um, how about uh, health? Uh, health, sorry, because like, uh, I mean, it's it's Health Gracie Academy, right? Does he? How often does he stop in? I know I can ask Rami this, but um, how often does he stop in? Does he does he train with you? Roll with you? Does he? Um, you know, what kind of influence does he have on you? I, I'm sure you don't see him as much, but I was wondering. Yeah. So like, man, Health will be in there. Um, he'll be in there Tuesday, Thursday mornings, right? Um. He'll be there Tuesday, Thursday mornings, and he'll usually uh hold on one sec. Let me just plug my 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 phone in real quick so I can charge it. Sorry, hold on. Um, no problem. Hold on. So yeah, like I was saying, so half half's in there Tuesday, Thursday mornings usually around like eleven thirty, and uh. Um, I, I usually miss him at that time because I do my conditioning on those mornings. So, like, what Half does is he'll usually, like, man, he fucking hunts people out. So he'll hunt me out for a couple weeks and just, like, torture me, you know. Like, <laughs> he'll make me train. Like, he'll watch me train all my rounds and yell at me and shit. And then I'll get done training those rounds. And, and I'll be, okay, motherfucker, let's fucking train. And so then I'll have to roll Half, I'll have to roll half for another, like, hour after I just train my rounds. After I just train my rounds, which is fucking fucked. So like, and the way Half trains is no time limit. You know, he'll grab the inside of your pants. He'll rape choke you. He doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> Usually it's like, I, I don't, I don't know if he trains. I don't know if he trains with everyone. You know, like, but he trains with his guys. He trains with his guys that I think he sees something in. You know, so, you know, I seen him, I seen him pick out certain guys for a while. He would do it to my roommate Julian. You know, and he would, uh, he would hunt down Julian and. And, and you know, like for a couple months, uh, he been, he was hunting me down, and he would come in on Wednesday mornings and and Monday mornings, Friday mornings, and he would he would just fucking torture me, and I just felt like shit every time Half's watching me. I just fucking I just crack like it's just like having I don't know, it's just the worst, bro. But you know, Half's the man, and he really cares about developing guys. So it's amazing that you know get to train with a Gracie like that, and and he's uh he's always thinking a new shit, man. Like it's weird. You'd never think a Gracie like would would like uh would want to like open up and and I mean I don't know would want to like just stay current on the newest shit but man like you know like for example he came in a couple week or a couple weeks ago and we trained and like I was I was I baron bowled to his back a couple times you know like and I'm sure he fucking let me but I don't even know I took his back and and like I guess Kurt told me the next day he was in there like early morning like asked Kurt like Kurt what's his fucking position da, da, da. and he came back and he had all these answers for it. he had all these fucking like illegal fucking calf slicers and shit, like <laughs> inside the pant grip shit. Like he probably wouldn't be able to do it, hurt, but he he thinks about it and he, and he cares, which is nuts, you know. So he he's a really he's a really amazing instructor, bro. He's a cool dude. And but he's you're obviously evil. you're you're obviously like really focused on uh, jujitsu right now. Um, I was wondering if uh, you had any plan to do any more MMA in the future. I know like something we had talked about personally. Um, that you know, once you get into jujitsu, maybe you got into it because of uh, of MMA, but then you stopped caring. But um, do you have any plans to get back into MMA at all? Bro, I just want to scrape these fucking. I want to scrape these dudes at the highest level. You know, like I just I, I don't really. You know, that's not even on my radar at this point. You know, like I just want to be out there like competing at black belt one day and and beating these dudes at black belt and then. I want to be one of the first 10 American Black Belt World Champions one day, you know, so for me, you know, winning or, or fighting MMA isn't even on my radar at this point, you know, like I, I, it's so far ahead of me, I have so much stuff I need to accomplish in Jiu-Jitsu that I, that I haven't even scratched the surface of, and I have so much work I have to do that, like, I can't even think about that, it's a completely, completely different thing, you know, so, I mean, one day, yeah. I guess just father.
think it cut out a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so Wolf, what's next for you? What? Uh, what? Just keep training. Did you like, get the what? answer? Or no? I think I think that we did. <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead, Adam. Yeah, Wolf, I was just wondering, so what's next for you? Just keep training, uh, just keep focusing uh, so, on Hey, training. ask it again. Hold up, I just got a text. It's kind of messing it up. Well, if it's a girl, answer it. We don't want to get in the way of that. <laughs> yeah, bro, just train, you know? Like, I just be training always. That's all I do. <laughs> I'll be... No, 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 don't worry. <laughs> she can wait. Um, I'll be training, bro. You know, I just I'll be I'll be uh training full time like always, and fighting U.S. Open. I'll be fighting U.S. Open coming up uh, in October, so I'm getting ready for that. You know, I mean, I don't really know about getting ready, but like I'll be just training and and I'll fight U.S. Open, and then June, January will come around, and I'll I'll be fighting again January to June um, every month. So. Yeah, just keep training and, and uh, keep doing what I'm doing. I, I feel like it's working, and I'm really happy with how everything is going. So I'm just going to stay on the program that I'm on and, and uh, yeah, keep competing January to June or whatever and, and just fighting these tournaments. Whatever Kurt tells me to fight, I'll just be fighting, you know. <laughs> awesome. Does anybody else have any uh, kind of closing questions yeah. for Wolf? Oh, what's up, Wolf? Any closing questions for Wolf? Anything else you guys want to ask before we uh, start to wrap this up? Uh, no? I think we're good. Yeah, no, Wolf, we, got, yeah, we had yeah. a list of questions, so we answered them all. It's awesome. Wolf, uh, do you have anything you want to add, kind of closing comments, uh, any sponsors you want to shout out to, anything else you want to say that we haven't covered? Yeah, yeah. I just want to thank my sponsors and stuff. Um I'd like to thank uh, KO Empire, that's Kurt's deal. I'd like to thank Kurt, you know, um, for helping me out and just being there for me with all the, with everything. Uh, Control Industries, CTRL Kimonos, uh, the guy Blaine, I'd like to thank him for helping me out, putting me on. You know, he's a really good dude, and, and he kind of just jumped in to sponsor me this year, not knowing if I was going to, you know, do good or not, and I've been doing well this year, so I'm happy, uh, I'm happy that everything's working out with him. Uh, Mac Muscle. Sponsors me, so they give me some supplements. I'd like to thank uh, Max Muscle, David Mulligan at Max Muscle Marin, and uh, and Seventh Sun Tattoo, my friend Luke Stewart at Seventh Sun Tattoo, um, for supporting me with some of my tournaments and stuff. Awesome, thanks. It's it's been awesome to have you on, Wolf. Uh, if you uh, just stick with us for a moment, yeah, guys. We uh, we, uh, we have a. We uh, we do a little segment here. We have uh, a sponsor of the week, so uh, oh, <laughs> these guys don't know what it is yet. Just, it's just, basically just, just something please. I make up every week. Go ahead, Rami. Yeah, no, I was just saying it's basically something that Adam makes up every week. It's just like some fake sponsor that he comes up fake with. Fake sponsor? With <laughs> well, no. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Wolf, 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 we don't have sponsors. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we make them up. <laughs> So this week, uh, I, you know, uh, just it's not so much a sponsor this week, uh, but just kind of a shout out that we wanted to do. We do have an author within our midst um, that we wanted to recognize, uh, promote their new book. So uh, Ahmed, just I wanted to say congratulations on your new book here. Uh, it's called Vascular: <laughs> The New Swoll, The Art of Looking Big for Skinny Guys. By Dr. Ahmed Charani, bro well, scientist. Well, yeah, like you know, you gotta get your proteins in. <laughs> yeah, you gotta. That's a nice picture, though. That's not... <laughs> hey, hey, hey! If 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 I could read, I would love to read that book. <laughs> okay. I don't know what to say. So Ahmed, uh, maybe you, you heard just, it. Uh, you, heard, you heard it from Wolf Bernardo, world champion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this book has already been endorsed by world champion Wolf Bernardo. So Ahmed, did you want me maybe say a few words about uh, about the book? 
Well, I mean, first off, I didn't know I had a book, but uh, I imagine it has good things in there, like how to eat right and, uh, uh, you know, protein and eggs and, you know. You know Wolf, Wolf <laughs> gave great advice, man. He's like, you wake up in the morning, you fuel, you stack up, and that's what I do. I mass stack. So. Uh, I mean, what, about, <laughs> uh, what about the... I'm just about this bulky life. <laughs> Ahmed, what uh, what do you say to the people out there that are saying that you are uh, receiving blood transfusions to maintain your your current level of vascularity? Well, you know, I asked them to come, you know, come to me in person, check out my vascularity, and you tell me. Like that's that's it. Okay, man, let's move on. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Uh, uh, hey, life life isn't even about you. Life's just about fucking getting ripped. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, I think that's a good way to end uh, end this episode. So, uh, Wolf, I just wanted to say thank you so much for coming on. It was awesome to have you on. Uh, you're a super cool dude. Thanks for showing us your apartment. It's the first episode of Just the Geek Top Cribs tonight. Uh, so that's super hey. awesome. <laughs> So thank you very much for coming. Well, hey, Wolf. thank you. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for having me. Uh, you know, thanks, thanks, Rami. You know, you're the man, bro. That guy's tough. I, I bet none of you guys know out there watching this, but Rami is a, is just like that young superstar. So yeah, thanks, Rami, for uh, looking out for me, man. And uh, yeah, check out Rami. That guy's uh, silver medal American Nationals. Check him. <laughs> yes, big congratulations to Rami for winning silver at American Nationals on the weekend. So, all right, so that's Hell it for yeah. episode 11 of Just the Gee Top podcast. Thank you very much to Wolf. Thank you to Ahmed, Jordan, Rami. And uh, I guess we will check you out next week. Happy week, everybody. <laughs>